Republican in favor of accountability. Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois joins us now. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, first of all, I want to get your reaction to, to day one of the trial. Were you surprised that Senator Cassidy did change his vote? Yeah, he's been hard to figure out. Uh, I'm not overly surprised. I think he's a principle-driven guy. Um, but uh, yeah, it was definitely a surprise and I think a pleasant surprise. And I think it's indicative of quite honestly how poorly the defense did in their performance. Did that surprise you? I mean, clearly the president, you know, uh, has had problems with paying attorneys, with keeping attorneys. Did it surprise you just the, uh, yeah, just the nature of their, uh, you know, their argument or lack thereof? Yeah, it did a little bit. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be powerful because how do you defend what happened on January 6th and the events leading up? You don't. But uh, it, I mean, I guess to these attorneys credit, they, they got on the case a week ago, you know, and now you have to put up right. a, a pretty serious defense. But yeah, it was certainly outmatched. And uh, I actually thought the prosecution did a good job. Yeah. I mean, what stood out to you today? So I didn't see all of it, but I'll tell you uh, the parts I did see, it was methodically, not necessarily just out of emotion, out of fact, laying down what happened, which I think sometimes we forget out of the emotion of what happened on the side way. But I thought the most. We need to add some commentary on, unless we get some copyright strikes or something. So that was the commentary. Anyways, continue. <laughs> I know. I, okay. We're going to get into it. The most powerful thing was how they opened it, showing the video, showing stuff that we hadn't seen on the Internet before, having the subtitles and the words people were saying, you know, with with Trump. And I think anybody, at least even if you don't want to vote to remove, if anybody had to doubt that this was, you know, Antifa or BLM or a false flag operation after that, there's no way you can. And unfortunately, there were people that did, in fact, believe this wasn't, you know, what it was. You know, it was interesting to me because the, you know, we've all seen a lot of, mm. or some of that video or a lot of it, uh, certainly. Um, but there was something about putting it in a, what seemed to be a chronological. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, this is the guy that the family, his family got 11 people. This is the guy. This is the senator, right? Not the representative. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did I not yeah. make that clear? No, I thought like, I'm pretty sure it was clear. I just wanted to make sure that people know what's happening. Right. So this um, is this before he got the letter or after? Um, this is after because the letter was dated on the 8th of January. This is on February 10th. Oh, OK, continue. Uh, thing where there was juxtaposed what the president was saying, what the crowd was saying, what was happening inside uh, the House chamber at, at the time that that and, and just sort of the small moments of horror and brutality against law enforcement personnel. You know, I think back to the president saying he was the law and order, the former president saying he was the law and order president, and, and those people who are attacking the Capitol saying they're patriots. When you see them attacking individual police officers, calling them names, you know, uh, torturing them in some cases, uh, it, it really just, even though some of these videos have been seen before, I just found that very incredibly disturbing. Yeah, it, it's amazing to me because as a supporter of, of police officers, but also a, a person that recognizes we need to reform in some areas, um, to see these folks with, you know, the uh, the thin blue line flags and this law enforcement stuff, using those to beat law enforcement officers. I mean, it's incredible. I, I've become friends with one of, wow. the, one of the gentlemen, I, I won't name him, but that was involved in that. And and I did that not was know really that. Really hurt. He's a police officer. You didn't know what? That they use Blue Lives Matter merch to hit the cops. <laughs> oh yeah, I watched that footage. They had the thin blue line, like the pro police merch, and they were hitting the police with the not pro police like merch. Hitting, like impaling. <laughs> oh my wait, how did I miss that? Holy crap. Oh my god, that is amazing. I mean, honestly, yeah. if you watch it, it's really not funny at all. Oh, okay. It's, sorry. It's really sorry. hard. Wait, impaling? What do you mean impaling? How does that work? Like, does anybody got okay, maybe I shouldn't be laughing. Did somebody get like seriously hurt with it? I believe so, yes. Oh my god. Okay, I'll take all of that laughter back. Okay, I didn't know. 
I thought they were, they were like trying to hit, and it, I didn't know it was one of the serious injuries. I'm sorry. I take it back. The irony of it is funny. The irony is still there, but maybe not that funny anymore. I'm yeah. sorry to the it's police okay. officer who was hurt. And to hear his stories, he said, you know, these people are walking around acting like they support law enforcement officer, and they're saying things that are chilling. It's like, I think there was, not to get overly spiritual, for me, there was just a serious level of evil that descended over that. And you see what happens when when you take rhetoric and you let that anger go overboard. And I think the president bears serious responsibility for what we saw in the six. And it's not just his speech that day. It's the four years of building the groundwork. All right. Okay. So it's for, to dummies in the live chat i know one police officer died this is not what i knew that one this is not about that dummies i was talking about whether this specific incidents that i was referring to hurt somebody i know that uh, the police officer who died i knew he died for some other reasons guys don't be a dummy no there Anyways, were more continue. than one officer that died one was like i know but immediate one i think a few succumbed to their injuries later yeah, yeah, yeah. But none of, I, I mean, I followed those stories. None of those died in the way that you mentioned. But anyways, it doesn't have to be. I don't death. think anyone died that way, but they were. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But it doesn't have to be, but they were still injured and that matters. That's, yeah. That's, um, injury is like. Matthew saying, are the Republicans trying to say that these people who stormed the building were part of BLM? Oh my God. Like Matthew, as soon as it happened, they were saying that this was BLM. You, how do you not know this? Yes. Yeah. Because um, there was like one person they, that they could identify as like being BLM, like, and so it's all Antifa all the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, leading up to that. You know, part of it, I think, just based on, on what you were just saying, I, it comes to mind the idea of otherizing people is something I think we saw a lot of over the last four years. I mean, it's something we've seen a lot over the last decades, but it's, it's so easy to otherize people, to make people other than, other than American, other than patriotic, other than, than human, you know, and we've seen it in Bosnia, we've seen it in Rwanda, where radio was telling people, the, you know, Hutus were telling the radio listeners that Tutsi were cockroaches, for, you know, to getting them ginned up for genocide. Um, and you see it in, in these videos where people who claim they are patriots are in the face of a police officer calling him, uh, you know, as we're seeing it right there and, and you know, gouging out the eye of one, you know, squeezing one in, in you know, suffocating one in a doorway. It's incredible. And that's the huge problem, Anderson, is not even our political dialogue. That's a huge problem. But it's, that's a result of the fact that we've picked tribes in this country. You're either on the left tribe or the right tribe. And anybody that's not on your tribe, even if they're not on the other tribe, they are seen as the enemy. And I've said before, kind of facetiously, but kind of not, I feel like if California got a nuclear missile uh, that you know some on the right would say, well, good, less electoral votes for the Democrats. And, you know, if Texas got it, someone will let. I just think the bottom line is we have to understand each other's humanity. You can disagree, but as, uh, you know, as we saw in a commercial that's made the round, we have common ground and we're standing on it. This is our earth. This is our country. This is us. And we need to see the humanity in each other. And we're just not. You wrote an opinion a piece in the Washington Post, and you said, uh, quote, impeachment offers a chance to say enough is enough. It ought to force every American, regardless of party affiliation, to remember not only what happened on January 6th, but also the path that led there. And you went on to say, the further down this road we go, the closer we come to the end of America as we know it. Oh, what my message... God. What That's do you think about that? <laughs> That's such an... Oh, sure. Gosh. There's not going to be the end of America as we know it. Calm down. Like, come on. You don't need to be like, I don't know. I think like some people want to make things that, yeah, bigger than they are. I mean, this is how you make like make significant effects that need to be taken seriously. You make them less people take them seriously by somehow managing to exaggerate it, even though it was already significant enough not to mm -hmm. need exaggeration. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then that means that you probably want more blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest blasphemous art available today. 
So if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook. That's blasphemousart.com slash ebook. Sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy. What could be better? So make sure you sign up. Link below.